here we go. Setting up, we're live and we should be. Three, two, mm -hmm. drum roll. There we go. And I think we're live. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good to see you. It's Dave Saunders from the worldwide headquarters of Madison and Maine. The phones are going off. That means we're live. It means we're now streaming live to the interwebs. Um, and uh, today we have episode uh, three of conversations with clients, or as we like to say, because we abbreviate everything, convos with clients. Uh, our good friend, one of our favorite clients, uh, giving the drum roll from the Virginia Energy Sense Program of the State Corporation Commission, Andy Farmer. There you thank go. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good there to be here. Go. So that's the whole thing about Zoom, right? You don't get the human interaction. You know, I went to go speak to a group the other day, 28 people, and they said, oh, well, Dave Saunders. And then the meeting organizer hit <laughs> mute. And then <laughs> hear everybody go, hey, Dave, nice to see you. Yeah. What else? And it's a strange world we're living in. Uh, but thanks, Andy. I appreciate you taking time away uh, from your lunch hour uh, to uh, have a conversation with us. I uh, want to back up, want to introduce you, tell people and have a chance today during the half hour that we have together um, about you, about Virginia Energy Sense, about the Value Your Power program that we've worked on for the last couple of years. And, um, and we've got some great information for anybody that logs in today about how you can save some money on your power bill. So that's that's right. That's good. Saving money. So Andy, welcome. Thanks for thanks for being here today. Glad to be here. Well, just to introduce myself, I'm the uh, Education Resources Manager at the State Corporation Commission, and the commission is the Virginia's uh, primary regulatory agency, including uh, responsibility for regulating utilities. Uh, and so that's why we're in, involved in an energy efficiency program like Virginia Energy Sense. Uh, back in 2008, the General Assembly directed the commission to implement a consumer education program on energy efficiency and conservation, primarily because the state has developed a policy goal of reducing electric energy consumption by 10% by the year 2022. So they said, okay, State Corporation Commission, go forth and develop a program. Uh, we developed a uh, uh, concept for the Virginia Energy Sense program, a uh, integrated uh, con communications program that actually got launched in 2010. Uh, unfortunately, due to some budget issues back then, we kind of had to scale it back for a while. <laughs> and then uh, came, uh, once things got a little better with the economy, we were able to come forward and uh, put uh, funding to uh, the program. It is unique, and I, I, I use that word very carefully uh, because there are no degrees of uniqueness uh, because uh, that's what my journalism professor always told me. <laughs> so it's not truly unique or very unique, it's unique. We're probably the only state-based consumer education program in the country uh, that is funded by a regulatory agency. And it is, it is funded by the commission comes uh, out of our, uh, our funding. And uh, there are other programs out there <clears throat> by utilities. Of course, there are federal programs like Energy Star and Department of Energy. So uh, we are unique in that we are a state-based uh, consumer education program. And we're also uh, directed by the Code of Virginia to do the program. So that may be another unique factor of, uh, involved in our right. program. So, so uh, the, the underlying factors there, basically back in 2008, uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia said, look, you know what, energy consumption is, you know, uh, 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 one, we all want to be good stewards and let's reduce our energy consumption, but also uh, just to maybe uh, take into effect for future capacity growth of population growth and smartphones and all this technology. And we're so dependent upon electricity. And so the idea was to reduce power consumption in the Commonwealth by 10%, right? Correct. And that's that's a big goal. 
I mean, if you think about it, how many millions of people, how many millions of devices and that sort of stuff? What was the what was the big strategy up front in terms of, hey, how do we, you know, I always you, know, you talked about your journalism professor. I had one of my favorite professors say, how do you eat an elephant, right? <laughs> you know, one exactly. bite at a time. And I, I use this probably every single week. How did you guys uh, <laughs> eat this elephant? Well, we looked at what kind of what the trends were, and we looked at what other programs were available in the country. And uh, we, we sort of looked at, well, is a 10% goal achievable? And uh, there was a, uh, before we actually got started, the commission held a stakeholder process. And we brought together a lot of different people from different, from utilities, from consumer groups, environmental groups. And basically they concluded, and the commission concluded, it's, a, it's an achievable goal. Uh, we can do it uh, without a lot of uh, difficulty because I think there is a lot of energy use that probably people don't e aren't even aware of, right. uh, that they can just as an individual reduce their consumption. They aren't sacrificing comfort. They aren't sacrificing uh, lighting. Or they aren't stumbling around in the dark, for example, uh, by turning off all their lights. There are just some easy steps they can take at, on the residential level. Uh, on a grander scale, there are bigger things that uh, industrial uh, clients can do. Uh, certainly there's a big, you know, that's a big incentive for them to improve their bottom line. Mm -hmm. uh, government has, has a lot of ways they can reduce energy, lighting, for example, in schools and government facilities. So there are a lot of steps that are available and actually a 10% goal is a doable goal. Right. Well, the, the, the thing in my mind, when we first started working together years ago was to me, I, I said almost up front, this is a no brainer. Okay. I've gotten a big power goal and I've gone. And then I yell at the kids, like turn the lights off <laughs> or, or I'm like, Hey, you know, what's going on around here? You know, I'm not, uh, I, I turned into my father, you know, we're not air conditioning the whole neighborhood, you know, close the door, you know, and those are things, I guess, that, you know, any dad would say to his kids, you know, basically, uh, how do we save some power around here? And, but it's, it's almost there immediately after he has the bill in his hand, you know, and, and, but the thing is, you know, you talked about big steps that companies can take, but there's a little small steps, you know, that, that we've been trying to convey to Virginians over the last, you know, four years or so that they can do. So the idea is this no brainer. There's a few things you can do. And then you can save on your utility bill. And, um, you know, how's the best way to convey that to Virginians, you know? Well, you, you hit the nail on the head. There is a lot of awareness uh, about energy and there's a lot of support of energy efficiency. Uh, we, hit, we did some focus groups in the very beginning and everybody around the table was, yeah, this is a good idea. I think there was a lot of uh, reluctance and maybe uh, un, not lack of awareness on how to do it. Right. And so let's, uh, what we thought of in our strategy, well, let's go with a tiered approach. Let's start uh, with the majority of our, our, our materials being the low cost, no cost steps. Things you could do this weekend, you could do today uh, to, to save energy. And these are more just, just things you can do around the house, steps you can take. Um, I hate to use the term behavioral changes, but that's what they are. You, you just right. change your behavior a little bit and you can save energy. Uh, not a big investment. Sort of tier two is maybe those small uh, investments and improvements that you can make around your house, like uh, uh, new windows or improved uh, weather stripping, something that might involve a little bit of effort on your part or getting a contractor or or, uh, or spending a good weekend. The third approach is maybe the big investment, the, the new uh, heat pump, the new refrigerator, the appliances. Those are, that's the sort of the third tier of, of uh, our energy right. efficiency steps. You know, so I mentioned a few minutes ago, when I first heard their program, I'm like, this is great. I can do a few things that are like low cost or no cost. To, to save some energy and, and then therefore save money on my power bill. So when we were first coming out with the campaign, 
uh, that we worked together on, and we had the idea of Jack, you know, a talking spokes plug, <laughs> a, a power plug that, right. uh, you know, basically was telling people, hey, you know, whatever this is, this is a no-brainer. I, forgive me for a second, but I, I, I actually have one of those original posters that we actually had around the power plug. You recognize that fellow there, Jack? Oh, there he is, right over our outlet. <laughs> exactly. And it's a saving energy is like killing zombies. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. And so we had a cutout in there to make it look like Jack, the power plug, was actually talking to the home consumer. Um, when we when we did that a few years ago, talk about that in terms of kind of consolidating that message around something kind of iconic in the home, you know, and having a an uncharacteristic kind of spokesperson was really literally the power jack talking back to you. And his name was oh, Jack, you know. His name was Jack. And he sort of sounds like a, a famous Jack that we all know and love. <laughs> right. Just like Jack. Yeah. yeah. Well, when we started the program, we really didn't have that sort of identity. Uh, we didn't. We just were focused on our, 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 our brand name and uh, sort of our call to action and then started developing the materials. We had to really focus actually on getting the foundation of the program together with the, uh, the building of a website, uh, introduction to social media. And then we were able to begin to develop some character of the program. And that was after a couple of years. And I think that's where, you know, when Jack was introduced, the, uh, and he became a very popular figure. You know, we have a lot of videos now. We have uh, the full minute videos. We cut them into 30 second uh, advertisements. We also have 15 second uh, how-to DIY type videos. And he's become sort of a franchise, <laughs> uh, but he's been, he, he, re he is very well received. That sense of humor, we, he's not preachy, he just kind of uh, gives you some quick tips and a, and a little little taste of humor. Yeah. Uh, it's appealed to all different uh, levels. I mean, we even showed it to a third grade class as part of our education program. The kids laughed, they thought it was funny. But they remembered the message too. Yeah, I was thinking that uh, that was one of the things when you'd shared. I think it was uh, when they went to that first uh, elementary school class. I think it was out in Goochland County, if I'm not right. mistaken. And uh, the kids were like, "Wait!" They thought it was funny. They're laughing and they're, "Where's Jack?" You know. And I was like, <laughs> basically uh, kids from uh, you know uh, um, eight to ninety-eight. You know, basically yeah. uh, kind of rallied around this because it's such an iconic figure, and the way that it looks, it's you know. Uh, you know, it's a, it's kind of a, a, it's a kind of a smiling, you know, face when you look at a, at a, at a power plug. Um, you know, speaking of, um, speaking of that in the campaign, you know, we've used Jack as a messenger to get out there and tell people directly through video, through social media, through events all over the Commonwealth, how people can take small steps to save money on their power bill. I figured today, Let's give people a couple of tips right now, Andy, if you've got a couple off the top of your head that maybe, uh, and as you say them, we'll put them in the feed here too, and we'll put a link in there so people can see some of these. I'm sure well, people yeah. right now would like to reduce their power bill. Of course, and we're getting into hot weather. And uh, when you think about this is a good time, you know, people are cranking up their air conditioners, uh, but maybe let's be a little more cautious with uh, that thermostat setting. And actually about 40% of your energy usage at home is for heating and air conditioning. So you can save that 10% by just adjusting your thermostat a little bit. And uh, the recommended temperature during the day in your home is 78 degrees. Now that may raise some eyebrows, but think about it. You go stand outside for a little while, it's 90 degrees and you come into a 78 degree house feels very nice and comfortable <laughs> so really and for those people working at home i mean 78 degrees is is it can be a comfortable setting uh really to make it more comfortable uh we uh, recommend using ceiling fans and as i we've said uh, in a lot of our messaging uh virginia energy sense is a big fan of fans and <laughs> but ceiling fans when they're used properly can uh, reduce the, the temperature feel by about two or three degrees. And always remember, you 
rotation in the summer, counterclockwise rotation up for that ceiling fan. You know, I was thinking about the program um, um, last week, as a matter of fact, and, and one of the things we did over four years ago, I guess, when we started working together, looking at one of the tips, came here to the building that we're in right now, and I said, I'm going to replace every single bulb inside the building with LEDs that, that I could get up to. Long shelf life, they're a little more upfront, right? The right. price has really come down on those. A little right. bit more upfront, they last forever. I replaced the first two bulbs last week that we put in almost five years ago. But the most immediate impact was our utility bill went down by almost a hundred bucks. Big building, you know, and again, we've got a big utility bill, a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks. You know, and right. I mean, those results aren't typical for a 7,000 square foot building our size or whatever else, but it was just really indicative of how going from a regular, you know, heat burning, you know, 60 watt bulb to a, a, a whatever, a, a five watt LED or whatever that gave you the same sort of light to do, multiply that by 50 light bulbs in the building and, and boom, we were saving a hundred bucks. You know, and that's a story that I share with everybody. It's about a 75% savings in energy usage. So you get the return, you get back fairly fast. And in where you are at a commercial setting, it's even better. Yeah. I mean, in the home, the, it takes a little longer, but you also have the much longer life of the bulbs. Right. And uh, where, where I'm working right now, this was a sort of an alcove area in our family room. Uh, I still had the old incandescent can lights in, above me. And I said, oh, they got to go. <laughs> uh, they got to go. So I went out, got some more LEDs. The and other thing about it is they produce so much heat. Right. So we went up and we were grabbing the bulb. And my son is taller, way taller than I am. He's grabbing the bulb. And he's like, I, I think it's going to be hot. And I'm like, I don't think so. Turn the light off. And it's cool. And he's like, wow, that's cool. Um, but the heat generated by a regular bulb also in the summertime with the lights increases the heat. So it's this kind of um, the cycle that you get into. Well, with um, an incandescent bulb, 95% of the energy used is for heat. Right. 5% is light. So it's, yeah. it's, it's much better with an LED. Um, the, the, we've all been affected, and I want to switch gears here, basically in the last 100 days, right? So we, 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 energy consumption has changed because people's lives have changed. So we've got... We've got less people working downtown. We've got more people working in their homes. People are driving less. Uh, the takeout in restaurants as opposed to whatever else. Um, so that's affected us. How has the program changed in the last 100 days in terms of getting your message out? We have gone back and looked at our messaging and focused back onto those basic steps. We had progressed a little bit into maybe maybe some of the tier two activities that people could do, the, the investments, the improvements you could make around their house. But we understand that people may be a little phys, uh, financially stressed at this time, and they may want to be putting that sort of uh, work off, but they can go back and fo focus on the basic steps. And so a lot of our messaging is going back to what we did in the beginning, some of the initial awareness uh, messaging. Uh, we've had a very good success in our digital campaign. In fact, I just got a, a good report that on, you know, our Facebook uh, results have been excellent over the last couple of weeks. And what we're also seeing is people are clicking through to our website where we have a lot of information available on energy, con uh, just energy education generally, and also steps they can take. Uh, one thing we did is partner with Energy Star, and we have a program called My Energy Star. And you can go in there. We've got about 50 or 60 projects that you can take to improve energy efficiency at your home. Everything from turning the ceiling fan to the right direction in summer to all the way to look at Energy Star appliances if you're going to make those investments. So we talked about a couple of those things like ceiling fans, thermostat little tiny, you know, flipping the light switch off, changing bulbs, right? Uh, a, a couple of things that are just very low cost, no cost kind of things that you can do, right? Right. As you move into tier two, and there's a lot of people from home, 
And I know that there's a lot of home improvement projects on because I have seen the parking lot at Lowe's and I've <laughs> seen the parking lot at Home Depot. You can't get near that place. But if somebody's going out this weekend and they're like, look, you know, we're stuck at home or whatever else. And we did the garden. We did this. We fixed that. We fixed this. We're running out of DIY projects, right? What's something that they could do at Home Depot or, or Lowe's this weekend? It doesn't cost a lot that might be able to save them some money on their power bill. But one of the things you want to look at is your house itself, or you you want to look for any cl uh, cracks or leaks, air leaks. Now, why send all that air conditioned air outside? So you want to just check around your windows, your doors, your foundation. We want to look around the utility uh, connections uh, where uh, pipes come in or, or the gas line, whatever, and make sure those are sealed up. And you can use weather stripping, you can use foam, you can use a lot of other low cost uh, devices to do that. Another issue is around uh, light switches mm -hmm. and electric outlets that are on the exterior walls. They can provide air leaks, even in a brand new house. And so you, you, it's a little harder to feel in the summer uh, because uh, you can feel the cold air coming through in the winter, but, but take a look at that. You can get these foam gaskets to go behind those plates and seal that up and cut the air leaks. That was one of the things we did here. They practically cost nothing, right? And we got like a pack of 10 of them. We put them around, around the light switches and around the power sockets. That was like an air duct. Right. Literally, you could hold your hand over it. You could feel the air, like hot air coming in from the outside, like literally through the walls, through the thing, but just sealing those stopped the leak and made the, uh, made the uh, in my space for the living room, like a lot more comfortable when we did it. And another good thing at this time of year is to change those air filters. Yeah. Uh, your heating and air conditioning system, those filters are sort of like the lungs. I mean, and right. you wanna make sure they're not clogged up. Um, I have two dogs, uh, so we have to change our filters quite frequently uh, yeah. because uh, pet dander and things like that get in it. So, you know, get on a regular schedule with changing those filters. Another thing is weather stripping, like for windows, right? A lot of times the heating or the air excuse me, just escapes through the windows. That's that right. stuff's not uh, like power stripping's not very, or weather stripping's not very expensive, is it? No, it isn't. And also you want to get, um, if you have a window units, there are a lot of people with window units. You want to make sure they're well sealed and have uh, yeah. One of Jack's videos is on air uh, window units, and it's actually gotten a lot of good response from the, the public. Uh, we've, we've been looking at the comments and the conversations that come out about what steps you can take and just a little bit of strip weather stripping around it to make sure it's a good seal. All right. So hold on. So if you if you do these kind of things and you save some money on your power bill, you there we go. <laughs> I, got my, I was waiting for that. And I was hoping I'd press the right one. I was really right. Hoping, there's a couple on here that are just, you know, I don't want to. Uh, but uh, um, so let's say that um, people are going out this weekend and they're saying, um, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do some of the things that uh, Dave and Andy talked about, or I'm going to go to Lowe's and I'm going to buy some uh, stripping. Where do they go to find that? Give me so give me the website first. VirginiaEnergySense.org. org. VirginiaEnergySense.org, or as Jack says, dot o r g. Right? O r g. Yeah, and there you can find um, all about the program. You can find resources. You can find some of the videos that we've made with Jack and some other tips. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think Jack's on the front of the website to welcome you there. That's right. Um, and um, um, you can go there. Uh, other additional resources you link to, you mentioned the Energy Star program. That's a right. federal program. Tell me briefly what that is and how you work with Energy Star. Because I've seen that, you know, on appliances, this is an Energy Star washing machine dryer combo. I bought it because it's supposed to be energy efficient. Efficient. That's right. It, energy Star is a program of the Environmental Protection Agency, and it focuses on energy efficiency, but it also provides uh, uh, information on uh, various devices and appliances, things like that. But they have a, a very broad energy efficiency program. We have teamed up with them. We're actually an Energy Star partner at Virginia Energy Sense. 
And that's really helped us because they've provided us with resources and uh, we've teamed up with them on uh, like uh, some Twitter chats and, and, and other things to get our message across. And then and a couple of years ago, uh, we won an energy, a national energy star award here at Virginia Energy Sense. And in speaking with the, the people there, uh, the, all they talked about was Jack. That, <laughs> that, the, the Jack uh, theme and the Jack messaging uh, really helped uh, win that award for us. And, and for us, it was a tremendous honor to be recognized among all these programs all across the country and to get that, that award. So uh, yeah, every state in the union pretty much has an energy savings program at this point, I imagine. Right. But, you know, and many of them are through utilities and other things. And, and the fact that we are, we want it to be just the uh, neutral source of information. That's the key with the Virginia Energy Sense Group. Right. We're from a regulatory agency. We want to be a neutral source. We aren't selling a product. We just want to have, we want people to be smart energy shoppers. That's our goal. So um, one, so if, if someone's listening at home this weekend, another great thing is that you can go by and buy the new washing machine or the dishwasher or whatever else and tell them that Andy and Dave said, go do that so they can save the money. <laughs> that would be That's great. Right. Uh, like that, because I know some people that would probably hit me up for that. Uh, uh, the, um, um, and then we mentioned a way for them to go find the tips, right? And, and the techniques on how to save energy. How do they connect with you guys? Suppose they're a company, let's go through a couple of scenarios. Company says, you know, I've got 16 plants across Virginia. I'd really like some ideas on how to reduce power consumption in my plants because that could contribute some to my bottom line. Do they go to the website? Do they call the program? We have a partnership program uh, with Virginia Energy Sense and we're over 200 organizations, uh, universities, school systems, local governments are Virginia Energy Sense partners. And what we do is share resources. Uh, we have a number of Chamber of Commerces that have uh, joined our, our program. Uh, we provide them with information. Uh, they, we've done uh, presentations and, uh, at uh, their workplace uh, as part of the, in October, you have Energy Action Month or Energy Awareness Month, which is whatever they call it that this year. And, and that's an opportunity for our team to get out and interact with employees. So uh, you can just go to our website. There's a drop down that says partnerships. Okay. You can sign up and, and our team will be back in touch with you. In the last few years, um, I'll give a shout out over to Rob and his team over Alliance Group. They've done a great job putting those partnerships together, but they've also done a great job managing events like you guys go to the uh the carry down watermelon festival and you go to get downtown lynchburg and you go to places all over the which i've been to both they're they're right. both a lot of fun and you've been to these places that's one thing i imagine it's not happening right now with events but are they are they coming back in the fall i guess if, if these events we're are planning still, for it we we okay. just start We've actually registered for a few events, kind of seeing what happens uh, maybe in the summer, like the Carytown Water Melon yeah. Festival uh, and others in the fall. So really we're targeting the fall. We, we generally kick off our season with Earth Day in, in April and then go through the summer and fall. So we will we'll see. I mean, that, that was a, a one of the beneficial programs because often you really need to have a conversation with people about energy efficiency and so they enjoy coming up and talking. And so- And uh, getting some freebies that you guys- And some freebies, we've had some freebies, but um, they're inexpensive uh, and uh, it's, it's a good way to, for people to interact with, right. with our program and learn about it. We have a, we've identified uh, a certain segment of the population, which we call motivated savers. And right. they are the ones who are maybe new to paying utility bills. They're maybe moving out, getting an apartment, getting a, a house for the first time. They're very interested in, in learning this information. Sometimes our older generations like me, are the, that age group, are uh, 
This is Derek, and he's a motivated saver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> house uh, six months ago? Yeah, in uh, late November. And he's got LED bulbs. He's got weather stripping and everything else immediately after getting his first power bill. So you got that's it. Yes. Your motivated saver right <laughs> that, uh, that is the motivation for, for yeah. savings. Exactly. Uh, and people are also motivated by other things, such as uh, it's good for the environment. It's good for yeah. the economy. It's, it's better... Uh, good investment in your home uh, makes your house more valuable for resale uh, there are a lot of other motivations but uh, right. uh, the bottom line is probably dollars and cents well we're coming up here at the uh, 30 minute mark uh, andy and i appreciate it um i really appreciate your time today just on behalf of everybody here uh we want to say thank you because uh, for a couple reasons whatever you and your team over at virginia energy sense have been an absolute delight to work with over the years you, you, you don't say no when we bring you <laughs> a crazy idea and we say something like, we're going to take a power plug and we're going to animate him and he's going to talk to people and he's going to, uh, he, he's, he's going to be rude and he's going to be, you know, fun and he's going to be quirky and, and you're like, okay. And then we bring it <laughs> to you and you let us do it. And then, uh, we're getting good results as a result. And, uh, we appreciate that. And, uh, you guys having that kind of faith in us means all the world because we can do the best work that we can. We've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed learning about it, connecting to other Virginians, thinking about how many tens of thousands of folks that we've reached over the Commonwealth save a little bit of money on their power bill. So it makes us feel yeah, good. It is. It's been a it's been a rewarding experience uh, you know, for me, and, and I've learned a lot you know, along the way. I mean, that's what's great. It's a continuing learning experience, uh, and it's certainly the the evolving nature of our, our marketplace, uh, it's always a challenge. And uh, as we hopefully come out of COVID and, 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 and pivot back to the new normal or whatever that is, uh, like I said, I, we were talking about it before the call, I have no idea what's gonna happen in the future. I've, I've just given up on predicting, uh, but guaranteed whatever the future holds, we will adapt and we will continue forward with the program. And so again, thanks, Andy. We really appreciate your You're time. Welcome. It's been great. I hope to see you in person and not via Zoom. <laughs> That's right. That's uh, soon. All right. Talk thanks to you later. Lot, Andy. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.